All right. Uh, so, welcome again. I am uh, Yogesh from Intel still, and uh, one of the leads of this uh, project. Uh, so, this is a, a presentation. I am honored to join on stage by Drew from Fault Management um, Team. He's a lead at Google, and Bilash Sridharan, who is a RAS architect at AMD. Um, so let's just jump into it. Uh, uh, our uh, our presentation here is about the framework for handling uh, uh, fault management at scale in a heterogeneous environment is what we want to talk about in the session. And this proposal is uh, basically envisioned to enable a data-driven understanding of hardware failures. And I'll get to it uh, later, uh, how it uh, enriches the, the logs and other formats, and uh, hence uh, gives deeper insights, and also uh, uh, collects data at a higher level and uh, um, enables more uh, uh, predictive fault analysis also. So uh, this is uh, the work that uh, this sub-project has done uh, for most part of uh, last year, I think. And uh, we are very, very close to uh, make a contribution to um, the OCP. Our common goal, as we already discussed here, is to address um, you know hardware fault and error uh, handling challenges at stage uh, at scale, and uh, come up with an uh, extensible uh, vendor and uh, silicon agnostic uh, solution framework. And uh, what we are going to again describe is that uh, requirements for this framework, which are going to be uh, contributed to OCP. And I'm, I'm very honored and proud to say that uh, this work is a result of collective effort from our sub-project. And our sub-project is very well represented by all the uh, stakeholders in the hyperscaler community, all the silicon vendors, memory vendors, OEMs, and uh, this is a, a fruit of uh, a weekly uh, attendance by all these participants and continuous editing of this uh, requirements document. So I'm, I'm very uh, excited about this, uh, this uh, collective work that we are doing as an industry. And we, we're very sure that it's, it's going to uh, solve problems for everyone. And it's going to have very long life. Uh, with that, I think uh, I'll let uh, hand the mic back to Drew, because we cannot say, keep it away from him. I, I get the, <laughs> so they gave me the exciting slide, right? The definition. So the first couple I'm going to skip, because hopefully if you're here, you know what RAS is. But I want to talk a little bit about what fault management was, or is. I started using the term fault management when I was at a previous job, because I would use the term RAS, and people would freak out saying, we can't mirror memory. We can't have lockstep CPUs. And really, all we were talking about is understanding how parts fail, what the error logs indicate for a given failure mode, how we, we need to understand how to collect that data, analyze it, and then take appropriate action. So we coined the term fault management to describe that. And so you can see that today we're covering that. We're not talking about uh, amazing new technologies to enable you to keep your server up forever. What we're doing is we're showing you how we manage failures and do the best thing that we can and drive quality improvements without radically redesigning the system. Another thing we're going to talk about today is system management mode. Um, so it's important because we don't like it. Uh, today, our solutions require that we steal the OSs from the operating system and do something in firmware and then resume. That, that's disruptive to the OS's performance. And you can find tutorials on the internet showing you how to find security vulnerabilities in SMM. So part of what we're starting with is SMM, but a big focus in our team is looking at ways we can eliminate it. And then out of band means we're getting things through the VMC. I think we've covered that already. Bare metal is critical for us because that's historically been the Achilles heel of fault management the case where you can't run anything on the OS. And then we might even have an OS that's encrypted where we couldn't see anything in it if we wanted to. But if that machine crashes, guess what? We've got to fix it, and we need to fix it accurately and get it, get it running and, and, and still maintain good quality for the folks that are using those machines. And then when we talk about vendors today, we're talking a lot about silicon vendors. And uh, we're really trying to figure out how we all work together to help each other uh, compete but also build the best quality product we can for our users. 
our current situation is a little bit messy. And, and you know, the, the bite dance folks have done a great job of bringing order in, uh, out of chaos on a particular line of products that they have. And it was impressive to see uh, what they've done. But it's really kind of complicated. And if you look at the upper you know, left corner, you see a big stop sign. For bare metal, we don't have a really good way to get the error data. We might beg customers to install an agent. But my past experience with that says that our progress will be limited. We also have complicated things. We have different sources of errors. We have uh, some things that only the BMC can gather. Today, we have other things that only the OS can gather. And the problem here is that when you look at the order millions of machines, things get weird because you see things that other people don't. And so um, we see uh, failures and we don't understand what they mean and we're not entirely sure we have the data we need to diagnose it so then we go through this month-long process of trying to reproduce the problem and understand what happened and every platform's different so the lessons we learn on on you know and on an, on an Intel CPU don't apply when we have a, a problem with a machine that has an AMD CPU and then with arm heaven help us right well, because now we're not just talking about and, I, and don't get me wrong I love arm but the problem is that now you have an arm CPU with a whole variety of different memory controllers depending on what arm CPU vendor you talk about so the problem becomes combinatorial and what we want to do is we want to have this variety we want to have the the rich uh, choices to choose from but we we need a way to understand what the machines are doing and today we don't have error logging standards. We have different mechanisms. You might have ATF or UEFI or, or there may be EMCA2. There are all these different standards. We want to try to find a way to bring something um, common to all of these types of CPUs. And the other problem we have is that the, these interfaces interfere with each other. So today, if you try to log something out of the BMC, there's nothing that unless it's a really bad error where the OS is messed up, there's nothing keeping the OS from logging and clearing that error out from under you while you're in the process of reading the error logs. So these race conditions mean that the interfaces interfere with each other and it interferes with our ability to do things out of band. The other thing, the other problem is, of course, we're using SMM and we're concerned about the performance implications and the security implications of having it. We want to find a way to eliminate the need to use it for our use cases. And then result of all of this is that we have time to market delays, we, we have a, a very poor adoption of RAS features, and so our silicon partners put a lot of effort into to implementing and validating these features that have great potential to help us, but because they're so hard to use, we don't use them. Now we don't know how to use them. We don't know what, what error logs indicate that we should try to, try to do something. And so we have ineffective fault management. And, and this is the problem we're trying to solve. So I hope that we can show you our solution today uh, and, 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 and give you a glimpse of what we're doing and build some excitement so that you join us. And I'm going to turn it over to Vilas. Yeah, thanks, Drew. Um, so first of all, I'm Vilas Shrutherin from AMD. Um, and I guess just before I get into my slides, right, I, I want to echo something that Drew said and something that Min Fan said, right? Um, this is a complicated area that requires a lot of work and a lot of expertise, right? And so one of the big things from my perspective, right, so from the silicon vendor perspective, right now what we gotta do is go to Google, go to Meta, go to ByteDance, go to whomever, figure out what their requirements are, and then go implement a solution for them, right? That's not, that's a lot of duplicated effort right? <laughs> it's really annoying, right? This is not an area where we want to invest that much time. We want to invest time in understanding the errors and making things better, right? Not in just figuring out how to get data out of the system, right? So really, I think one of the big things we're trying to do here is um, come up with a common set of things where we can say, you know, from a silicon vendor perspective, we do it once and then everyone uses it, right? And what we do is going to be us, and you know, I'll talk a little bit about that, but, and you know, what Intel does is gonna be them, but at the end of the day, all of the cost, the entire industry can, can benefit from that, right? I mean, I think that's kind of the high level goal. That's one of the big high level goals here, right? And then for, for you guys, kind of the same thing, right? It's, it's a lot less work <laughs> overall, right? Um, okay, so, you know, so kind of, I just wanted to sort of level set on the, the top level, you know, 
the, vi the vision and, and kind of what the, the benefits of this are. Now, now let me go into some of the details. So Drew you know, showed you the, the current state and Min Fan from, from ByteDance showed you an implementation of the current state, right? Um, you know, if we want to look at where we want to get to, right, it's this drawing um, here, right? And what you see are, you know, a few different boxes, right, and I'll just walk through them. So on the left is the vendor fault management interface, right? So this is the, I would just say, the silicon vendors, you know, sending logs out of the, you know, let's say processor or accelerator. Now, a complexity that's not here, but Drew will talk about later, is sometimes the logs that come out of a processor are for memory, right? And so that has to, you know, that has to be considered, right? Is the, <laughs> the interfaces here are not just dedicated to each piece of silicon, but potentially, you know, span multiple pieces of silicon, okay? So now those go into the BMC, um, and, you know, again, Drew will talk about how we do, the, you know, how that, the vision for the out-of-band piece. Now, from the BMC side, now this is in the cloud, you know, infrastructure, right? It goes through, gets packaged up, in a relatively standard way, regardless of what the actual data says from the vendor, through the cloud infrastructure and into the cloud, and somewhere in the cloud in their control plane is a tool, right? And this is the vendor analysis tool that's in this green box, right? And so that unpacks the data in a kind of common way, but then there's a vendor-specific set of things that it does to understand the data and then potentially drive additional sets of actions, right? And, and, and just information out to the, you know, to the data center operators, right? So, you know, really what we're seeing here is on the left and then on the right are, you know, essentially deliverables from the silicon vendors. And then the intermediate portions are common, you know, cloud infrastructure pieces, right? So the silicon vendors, all of us, can deliver a clear, you know, a set of things. <laughs> and then it can work with anyone's, you know, cloud vendor. Or any any anyone's cloud infrastructure, right? So you know, in addition to helping reduce the amount of work this is overall, right? This is also nice because it gives us a very, as a silicon vendor, gives us a very clear set of deliverables, right? Like, okay, we know what we need to do and how it needs to plug into these things, and okay, we can just do that over and over again, right? <laughs> so that that is really helpful. Um, and then the you know the idea for the intermediate pieces here are to use you know. Um, existing industry standards, so like ACPI or Redfish, and then maybe enhance them as needed, right? Okay, so that's kind of this. Um, so let me talk a little bit in detail about the two vendor pieces here, because as a silicon vendor, I think this is, you know, this is where I'm the most <laughs> interested in it, right? Um, so the, the idea, right, is we will, the, the node vendor, the silicon vendors, will implement out-of-band collection in the error logs in the BMC, right? And so we'll build an interface that lets the BMC do this co collection, right? The, their log collection, right? And then there'll be, you know, common code in the BMC, or there'll be potentially a little bit of vendor-specific code in the BMC. Drew will talk about that to sort of package that up. And then common code to send it over, you know, through, uh, you know, the vendor APIs are exposed through Redfish, so they're sent through the cloud infrastructure, you know, through Redfish and, and other standard mechanisms, right? And then additionally, in the screen box, you see the arrow going back, which is the RAS actions, right? And so this is where a silicon vendor would say, hey, you know, traditionally, you know, as, as Drew gave the example of page retirement, right? Traditionally, that's all done in band through the OS. It's making its own decisions, and each node is making its own individual decisions about all that, right? But one of the things we can do here is, hey, you can sort of gather all the data in the cloud and say, well, you know what? I want to make smarter decisions about this, and so I'm going to go back to maybe this node or maybe even a whole other set of nodes and say, please go retire that set of pages for, you know, whatever reason, right? And so that way, coming back out of band, you can actually drive RAS actions through all of this, right? So it's taking some of the stuff that very traditionally for years and years and years has been kind of single node in band and trying to migrate it over into the cloud so that it can be scalable, much more scalable and much smarter, honestly, right? And so that way, you know, once this can, once this all comes together, right, you know, we can, it'll, like Drew said earlier, lower the engineering effort to try RAS features, right? It'll drive, hopefully, less buggy implementations because we can just validate kind of one thing, right? Um, and, you know, I, uh, you know, Drew talked about SMM, I'm not going to really talk about that, but fundamentally, like, we can actually do things here that won't affect the thing, the, the code that is running, right? The end user code that is actually running, trying to do real work, right? So that's, that's kind of the, the overall idea and, you know, talk, focusing on that green box. So here's the other green box that I just want to point out. Um, 
This is also now going to, you know, ideally be a, a silicon vendor deliverable, but I want to point out it's not just a single silicon vendor deliverable, right? Remember I said that it could be memory errors, it could be silicon errors, whatever. There would be multiple analysis tools that get plugged in here. So it might be an AMD and a, you know, memory vendors, silicon and or multiple memory vendors analysis tool that all get plugged into this box. And, and again, Drew is going to talk about the details on this, right? And that way, you know, the actions can be very specific to the piece of silicon that has the, the, pro the error, right? Okay, and so I'll just recap this quickly because I think we've talked a lot about this, right? A key benefit here is that you don't have to worry about whether the host is, you know, bare metal or virtualized or anything, right? This is a standard way of addressing essentially all the use cases in the cloud. And then, you know, if we are successful in this, the goal will be to significantly improve the accuracy of diagnosis. You can get all the detailed data, right? Do the proper, you know, through field replaceable unit identification. And like I was saying earlier, right, build more advanced tools so you can actually learn <laughs> more across the cloud and take actions across the cloud, right? I mean, that's, I you know, maybe that might be step four, <laughs> but fundamentally this is the, the work to enable that, right? And then driving the RAS actions back. Um, so, you know, Drew talked about the current state. Ideally here, you know, root causing problems is challenging as it is. It's really, really frustrating when the, the barrier to root causing is lack of good data, right? Like that's a really frustrating place to be. And so ideally what we can do is remove that as a barrier to root causing problems, right? That, that, that problem in and of itself is hard enough. Let's not, let's not have these barriers where it's the just getting data out that's a problem, right? And then, you know, that'll also help drive quality improvements, right? So, you know, Google or, or Meta, whoever can come to Intel and AMD and, or, you know, ARM vendor X and say, hey, we're seeing this thing, you know, go tell us what this is, go fix it in the, you know, whatever, in future revisions or future silicon or whatever, right? So we can, as an industry, get better, <laughs> right? And so ideally, right, that's the result, right? It's, you know, reduce time to market, higher, but just fundamentally, we get better as an industry, right? And so that's the overall goal for this. So now, I've presented a very simplified view of this. So I'm gonna turn it over to Drew to walk through some of the details in each of those boxes. Thanks, Vilas. Oops. Okay, so this is the picture uh, that shows how everything works. And if you look, we, uh, it, it's a pretty complicated drawing. We have going, the data generally goes from you know, left to right, like an engineering drawing should. and. Uh, We've added some things, so we've eliminated SMM, we've added a bunch of new hardware, and so we are working with all the silicon vendors to add new hardware and future products to enable this framework. And what we'll do is support that hardware, we'll abstract it from us through the green library called vendor code. And that vendor code can do things like uh, uh, gather errors uh, to provide action interfaces. The, our goal out of that is to generate a log called a CEPR log, cl Common Platform Error Record, and that's, that's a UEFI standard, it's nothing new. But what we love about it is that it's compact and we can embed a GUID in each record that allows us to say this is what logged the error. So if it's a, a Skylake memory controller, it can have a GUID. If it's a Milan processor, it will have a different GUID. And then we can use that as a key to make sure that we have the right analyzer to look at the data. The data g goes through the BMC, and we've worked to, um, you know, with, with some open BMC maintainers. They're, they're, one of them's here today. And uh, we have, uh, we've added things like the hardware fault monitor, but we're, we're gonna plug into DBUS. And then, working with folks like Jeff uh, Hill, I'm sorry, Jeff Otter. I know you're, I know you're the, uh, Jeff Otter. Um, anyway, uh, he's been helping us figure out how to integrate this into, uh, into Redfish schemas. And he's, he's helping us grease the skids to make sure we have the right place to place the data. So what we'll do is we'll expose the data in the interfaces based on a schema through Redfish to our infrastructure. And then it, the infrastructure we're, we're abstracting away because every vendor will do something different. Our point is, is that once it goes out of the green box on the left, it, um, it, it's abstracted. The BMC doesn't care how big it is. And so uh, 
we still can support OS logging. It's optional. Um, but, the, but the really important thing for us is it supports bare metal and it's rich because the vendors are providing the code that does the error logging, the actions, and the analysis. So we'll start with digging into this hardware. So you know, out-of-band hardware is required. And I mentioned a race condition earlier where you have an error and then it's a race between the, OMC, uh, the, the BMC and the OS today. And guess who's probably going to win? is the OS because it's on a much faster processor. So we need some hardware support here to enable this. And it enables us to do things that today require BM, the, the, us to, to go into a system management mode. So it eliminates the race conditions, eliminates the need for system management mode, and um, we still can support boot time errors through other interfaces. You know, the BIOS can talk to the BMC, so we don't miss anything there. The operating system still has to see some errors, though. So we're going to talk a little bit later about, uh, so, so Yogesh is going to talk about poison or containment and poison, how we handle poison. Um, OS needs a synchronous interrupt to stop its execution to prevent it from using corrupted data. So that's unavoidable, and we don't mean to change anything there. It's necessary for error containment and recovery. So those are still exposed to the OS as needed. And the BMC can deliver data. We talked a little bit about page retirement. We can have an analyzer that says, you know, this page is pretty unhealthy, stop using it. And we're talking about a way that the BMC can write uh, error to uh, some memory, tickle ACPI to copy that data into the hardware, um, what is it, hardware error source table, I can never remember what HEST is, and, uh, and then the OS will see that and act on it. So that allows us to take actions even in the OS through the BMC, but in a very standard way. So then next comes the, 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 the framework, and I talked a little bit about it. The vendors provide the code for error logging, and what that allows us to do is get really rich data. I don't know what register to ask for half the time, but if I, if I, if I go to one of my partners that work on silicon here, they can often tell me, and then we start digging into it, and, uh, and, and they, they end up giving us a whole bunch of things that we wished we had gathered initially. We want to head that off and just have them gather it from the beginning. And we've talked about RAS actions, but it's abstracted. So uh, what the output of this is a CEPA record. So if I say, give me your errors, and they give us a CEPA blob, that's all we really need in the BMC. Then we can surface that up to the things that I'm going to show you on the right and do something with it. The other thing we love about this is that the, ACPI, uh, the API is discoverable. And so we have a Redfish schema. And when a driver shows up that supports new things, like, like let's just say the new magic m heal your memory forever feature, that would show up on Dbus and there would be something in re the Redfish schema that causes that to be exposed to us. And then we can call it. And so what it means is that there's, it's a lot lower effort to integrate new features into the platforms. We're having the vendors do the heavy lifting and it's in their interest to do that because they want us to use the feature. So if we come up with a way that they can make it easy for us to use, We'll use the feature. They've differentiated their product, and we've, we've enabled healthy competition, giving us things that deliver features that help us. Okay, and then um, the other thing is we, we, can, um, uh, we can trigger rapid actions if we need to. And so we have the hardware fault monitor, and we can use that as an aggregator. So let's say that we're talking about a, 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 a voltage regulator that detected that something was flaky in power. That voltage regulator log could be also associated with the CEPA logs. They come up with the same, they come up in the same bundle of error logs. We call them hermetic error logs. When we send them to the analyzers, we see that there was a power problem, we see there's a memory problem, but you know what? If there's a power problem to the memory, I probably don't want to replace it. I want to deal with the power problem. And so we can figure that out with this infrastructure because we have an aggregator on the BMC that will help us collect additional data. And then the analysis tools are actually what excite me the most. Uh, when we say decodes the error, what we mean is that a lot of the hyperscalers, we want to know what data is flowing where because we are intensely concerned about PII. And so because this data is decoded, we can see what they're gathering. We can also run our own rules on it. We can, we can reason about the data. If they don't decode it, I could write an ML rule that says whenever this bit is set, there's a problem. And that bit could be the valid bit. 
and, and that's not really very valuable. But if I can uh, build things that reason on a particular, about what a particular field means, then I can say, okay, there's signals here. So we can use techniques to discover new signals in this error data, perhaps ahead of the vendors, and then work with them to add new rules to their tools. We can also um, suggest RAS actions. So let's say that a vendor finds something that says, okay, this is a subword line driver failure in a DRAM. Well, the most likely thing I'm gonna use to fix that is post package repair. So the analyzer can s say, we found something that looks like a row failure and here is the feature. In fact, here is even the redfish call we want you to make on this machine with the parameters included. It makes it trivially easy for us to take actions. And we can review what that contains. We can decide whether we really trust that or not uh, before we um, before we tr pull the trigger on, on blowing a fuse in a DRAM. And that's where the cloud provider policies come into play. So we also want to have some control, even with this analysis tool. The, um, the, the thing that we also that we're very excited about is that we end up, when there's a problem, um, we end up getting patches and experiments and we try to iterate as rapidly as we can, but it's hard to do that in firmware. And so by putting the analysis tools up in the cloud, we can do experiments, we can even run analyzers in parallel, and we can assess the quality of one over the other, and then decide what we want to use and, and which, which symptoms we pay attention to and which we ignore. And, um, and, and as we collaborate with them, we've already been collaborating, we've, done, we've been prototyping this. We've discovered in looking at billions of hours of device data, we've discovered five bit failures and that's what it requires. And so people ask me, how do you make machines reliable? My answer is five bit at a time. And, and that's what it is. There is no magic here. It is hard work and discipline is what we're advocating, but we're b creating a framework that allows us to collectively do that. And as we swat down five fit problems, we'll suddenly wake up one day and say, hey, we've made this system a lot more reliable. And so we're, we're particularly excited about the ability to derive quality improvements with the vendors. So this is just a big picture of the, the infrastructure, just to kind of give you an overview. It takes advantage of the vendor's specialized knowledge. And, and you know, I've been doing that. I've spent, you would not believe how long it took us to reverse engineer aspects of these guys' ECC. But we needed to know that because I needed to map the bits that I'm seeing flipped in memory to a risk profile. With their help, I don't have to do that anymore. And one thing I forgot to mention is, Another thing that just thrills me is that we have memory vendors here today. We've, been, we've had excellent partnerships with, with Micron and Samsung and Hynix. They're actually interested in building analyzers. And so you remember I mentioned earlier that if you see a memory error and you flip a coin, you'd be, you'd be doing a smarter thing than if you just count the memory errors. The memory vendor, please ask them. I think they would be thrilled to tell you that th that is correct, that that is wrong. Please don't count memory errors. And they're here to help. With their help, we can vastly improve our ability to diagnose memory failures, and we can decide which ones really matter and what the appropriate action is to, to get our memory subsystems healthy. And that's gonna be important because there are challenging, challenges facing the DRAM vendors where we all need to work together to make systems reliable. So thank you. I think we're gonna, I'm gonna hand it off now to Yogesh to talk, uh, give you an example of how this would work. Thank you, Drew and Vilas. Uh, this was uh, great. I uh, think uh, we went in great details of uh, what the framework is designed for, how it's going to help, and what pieces are uh, needed from various stakeholders. Uh, and now, uh, with the help on a, uh, of an example, I'll uh, try to, actually multiple examples, uh, how this actually works, uh, how it, uh, when you put it in, uh, together, how it um, acts. Uh, so with some hypothetical examples, let's uh, step through this, right? So the first example is, um, you know, uh, poison creation and um, indication to OS for offlining a page, right? So number one, uh, the little blue circle that you see towards the left side of the screen. Uh, 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 a memory controller uh, in the CPU detected uh, uncorrected error and it poisons the cache line, right? Uh, next thing is the out-of-band hardware uh, 
uh, that is uh, part of the silicon uh, sends uh, detail log information to BMC. Now that's where the magic starts happening, right? Because now BMC has awareness of which vendors uh, uh, silicon is dealing with, primary silicon and, and CPU silicon, right? So it has very specific uh, analyzer codes that it can run and very precisely translate the error into uh, uh, correct true, right? So uh, that is first benefit uh, that uh, this framework provides that you can have specific vendor specific and, and that's not designed for one vendor like uh, uh, Minfin did a great job explaining how uh, they worked with Intel and created this kind of uh, exposition of this kind of problem for one vendor but this, the beauty of this thing is you can have multiple vendors uh, code running there and uh, uh, in your BMC and uh, it's just uh, kind of seamless to transition from one to another. Now the fourth thing also is um, that uh, you want to send indication to OS, right? So what happens is the BMC sends um, interrupt to uh, ASL code uh, and uh, that populates the same error information in the hash table for OS to consume. OS can con uh, get that warning and mark that page uh, uh, to offline because that data is poisoned. Uh, noticeable thing there is that uh, no SMM is needed. OS ASL code ran in the OS context, so uh, you don't have to steal cycles from your CPU, right? The next example, which is more of a hypothetical part of it, because, you know, suppose the same error happened, number five circle, which is same as number one, same error happened, uncorrected error, and, you know, cache line poison, but some application, hypothetically, still consume that poison, right? That's number six, right? So uh, application consumes the poison data. In this case, OS will get a machine check exception for, uh, due to poison consumption. And again, uh, true is iso isolated as a dim uncorrected error. And OS can choose to recover or crash. And the beauty of this thing is because we are out of band, uh, while uh, OS is resetting past the event for uh, res uh, after the crash or it's timing out, we still have visibility into the platform, right? So uh, out of band hardware, uh, BMC can still uh, uh, get to uh, get to see the logs and uh, uh, and what's happening in the platform at the time. And the third part is um, uh, basically uh, we talked about that uh, our vision is to basically drive data-driven uh, insights into the. So uh, this is in this example, I'll show how we actually can use all these pieces together to enrich the data set, right? So uh, same example continuing on. Uh, we started number eight here. Uh, out of band hardware uh, send the logs to VMC, uh, where num number nine is that vendor code uh, is running and it identifies the, does the analysis identifies the true and indicates which is the unit to be replaced, right? We still do it, there's nothing new there, right? We do it today, but uh, in a little bit of clunky way. Uh, the next step that can happen is uh, th at the debus, the data can be enriched with additional uh, uh, context about what was happening in the system at the time. So telemetry data can be correlated by, uh, uh, with, the, with the error data uh, by uh, uh, some kind of mean of a timestamp that's running and the uh, uh, BMC uh, analysis tool can uh, identify that and expose it to, uh, to Redfish, right? So now the cloud service provider infrastructure, which is the big box on the right side, that has further fault analyzers running, right? So it can use that rich data where CSVs can have vendor code uh, from, you know, any silicon vendors, GPU vendors, memory vendors, uh, adopt it to their uh, requirements, their usage pattern, and uh, run further analysis tool for, for, for example, you know, uh, your uh, fleet level uh, uh, predictive failure analysis, or they found some new error signature. The dim vendor said, hey, we have this new error signature, but these are the steps you need to do. They can actually do it on the fly, you know, seamless uh, to your system still running. You can have additional insights to how to handle new kind of error signatures. So um, that is basically, our vision, uh, how we uh, bring it all together and can handle different kind of errors. OS still gets information that it must and the uh, uh, rest of this stuff is happening out of, uh, uh, out of band. Uh, additionally, the data set is getting richer and easy to uh, correlate. So, I hope uh, 
we uh, drove home the point that you know error handling at scale in a increasingly heterogeneous uh, environment at uh, larger uh, hyperscale is is uh, is a, is a painful by, uh, thing right it's not easy we don't have a good framework uh, by dance uh, uh, minfin did, did a great job of exposing how they're doing it and it's it's not scalable because it's just one vendor one solution and if you keep multiplying it for every system every silicon every smart nick every gpu how many codes you'll have to maintain and how many different things that you'll have to uh, basically work with different vendors and interfaces for those are more painful. So what we are trying to do is to generate those requirements here, right? Our vision is that this BMC first, or uh, out-of-band model, uh, supports most of the CSP use cases, right? And uh, because we are getting the uh, error analysis code from vendors directly, they know their silicon better, they have the inside information, their secret sauce, whatever. They can give you some package code which can run and, and, and further uh, unwrap the error. Operating system is still getting what it needs, so it, that's happy. And uh, this is fully extensible, as you can see. You know, we can work with all the vendors and get all sorts of uh, you know uh, analysis codes, and you know it works even with like different revisions of um, you know your, your micro code or whatever. Um, so I hope we um, draw home the point that this is a, a very very um, ambitious uh, undertaking. <laughs> There's a lot of work to do here. Our first step was to identify the pain points, to create the error formats and identify how, what errors we need to handle, how we handle it, what formats we'll use, what standards are available, what gaps are there, we need to fill those. And all that we are contributing to OCP as a requirements document, right? Now, we do realize that out-of-band solution is a good answer for most cases, but it's not the answer for all the cases, right? So we, want, like for example, uh, small system doesn't have BMC, they don't want to invest in that, right? Or, uh, or some vendor has other reasons for just using in-band methods, right? So we are evaluating in-band uh, handling extensions. In fact, yesterday in um, uh, uh, cloud service models, we saw uh, Josh Kola presented uh, uh, in-band uh, IMA, uh, which is good work. So we want, definitely want to collaborate within OCP and you know, uh, read benefits from those synergies for creating uh, solutions here. So working with the existing industry bodies is, of course, something we had to do. And Jeff here is helping us uh, and uh, with, the, with Redfish. And we have other uh, uh, Open VMC folks helping us. Um, and one thing that uh, we all realize is uh, this is a big dream. And we have all been through industry long enough to know things cannot change. I mean, I don't even think I, I want to say the word overnight, over a year. <laughs> things cannot, just cannot because there's so much investments in the existing tools, technologies, fleets, whatnot. So it would be helpful for this work group to create some kind of uh, 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 roadmap where we have a, a tentative timeline, like what can be done by what generation of silicon. And we'll have to work with all the vendors uh, and, and kind of get that clarity. If we can provide that clarity to hyperscalers, then we can get more participation from them. Then they can see, OK, there is a, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So that's why we're investing in this thing. So these are our, uh, some of our next steps. And uh, I think I cannot say enough. This is a big undertaking. It's very ambitious. It requires everyone. <laughs> we need a lot of help. So we do want all of you to come participate. Friday afternoon, one hour every week, we talk about this. We, or if you cannot afford to come uh, every week, we are a lot of documents we are sharing online. We need everyone's inputs. Please review. Please comment. Please help us help you, <laughs> or, uh, everyone, right? And uh, like I said, uh, cloud service model is doing some stuff. Uh, we also noticed some other uh, groups that are doing some stuff. So we definitely uh, want to collaborate, reach out, and you know, work together so we don't have duplication of efforts and you know, industry has one solid solution. Uh, I have some links here. Um, I think uh, that brings uh, an end to our uh, presentation. Any time for questions?
Yeah, absolutely. You have absolutely no time for questions. You're three minutes over, but given the fact that you're you're eating into your panel time. You can take as many questions. <laughs> no, I think we will uh, we will uh, let uh, panel uh, uh, start. Yeah. We don't want to delay everyone. So okay, thank you very we, much. We everybody. can stick around afterwards for questions if yeah. people want to talk. We will do that. There there will be time during the panel for questions. So. <laughs>